Welcome to KJV Cafe, where we explore great truths from God's holy word in a simple, down-to-earth fashion. Romans 10:17 shows us where faith comes from. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let's grow our faith together in the cafe today. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. Grab your Bible and a hot cup of coffee or tea and join us now as we explore God's holy word. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Good to be here. Today, we are talking about liberty. Oh, blessed liberty. So thankful to have liberty. You know, if you live in America, you should thank God for living in America or putting you here because you have liberty. And yes, there's politicians that will use a lot of um, of, of uh, big words or sensationalism, say our liberty is either you know, under threat or is taken away and so on. And I, I know that in some respects it has been. Uh, and at the same token, we have it better than most other countries. We really do. We, we are very blessed in this country to have liberty. I'm a preacher. I'm a small business owner. I'm a family man. Um, and God is really blessed in all those areas. It couldn't be, I couldn't have these things if I were living in, in certain countries. I can think of some, I may not say them. I couldn't have those things. The government wouldn't allow uh, certain things to be said or done. But I have liberty, amen. Uh, and guess what? You do too. Now, liberty in, in our country is nice, but you know what is far better? Liberty in front of a, your God. Liberty in front of your God. What a thought that you would have liberty, that you'd have freedom in front of an all-powerful God. Now, how on earth did that happen? Well, we're going to look at a verse of scripture, and then we're going to get into it. Galatians 5, verse 13. Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Paul writing uh, here in Galatians 5.13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And so we see here Paul writing to the brethren, that would be to those that are saved, amen, those that are Christian, they have liberty. And now, uh, what is Paul writing about? I guess the first thing to approach here is the context of the scripture. It is that Paul is saying they're not under the law, right? And so it was a big debate at that time uh, in the church there. Are they under the law? Do they need to continue uh, the circumcision, continue the law? And uh, Paul is saying you're not, you know, and again, Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles. And so those that uh, had never been under uh, that kind of law, Paul is helping them understand that you're still not under that law. And for those that had been under the law or been told they needed to go under the law, Paul was describing that they don't, in fact, need to be under the law, that they are not under the law, that they now have liberty. And so the first question is, how do they have liberty? How are they given access to liberty in front of God, that they wouldn't have to follow certain procedures to merit favor with God or to be approved of God? How did they get that? And the way that they got that, and this is Paul's emphasis here, is by what Christ did on the cross for them and for you and for, for me. It hasn't changed at all. What Christ did on the cross by, by willingly give himself um, on Mount Calvary there and dying and uh, shedding his precious blood for the remission of sin because he's perfect and we're sinners. And when he shed his blood for our sin, then we, when we accept that free gift of salvation— we're saved because we know that he was buried three days in the grave and then risen again, miraculously resurrected, walked the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and then ascended up to heaven is at the right hand of the Father today and will soon call his church home. Uh, Christ is our everything, and Christ saw our need and had pity on us. He saw us as a people 
Uh, there's a scripture there where he wept, and as he looked at the marketplace and saw everybody there, uh, he realized their their need that they wouldn't ever be able to make it on their own out of this sin debt, that the, everyone there was hell bound because that's where sinners go. They go to hell. Amen. And the only way to be saved, the only way to not have our sin imputed to us or accounted to us is for Christ to have died for us. And then when we accept that free gift of salvation, we are then forgiven of our sin debt, past, present, and future. But you have to accept that free gift. If I knocked on your door and I had a box, and that'd be kind of weird if I knocked on your door, big old guy in a camo jacket with khakis on and boots and stuff saying, hey, my name is Clark and I have a gift for you and I've wrapped it up and I reach my hand out, uh, you know, if you were like me, you may be thinking, I don't know, right? Especially this day and age, people really don't go door to door too much. Certainly not with a free gift, right? If you're like me, your skepticism might kick in and you may close that door. Well, if you close that door, you were offered a free gift, but you didn't accept it. Now, if you said, okay, all right, and you just trust in kind of person, you say, I'll take your free gift. And you say, thank you very much, Clark. And you take the gift and you close the door. You accepted that free gift. All you did was accept it. You believed me when I said I have a free gift for you. Now that is, I know it's a silly example, but in essence, Christ is saying, and God is saying through Christ, if you believe on what he's done, amen, and if you truly believe and you accept that free gift, if you say, fine, I'll accept it, you receive it, that's all you can do. And now you're saved. And that's it. That's salvation. When you accept Christ as your Savior, amen, and now you want to get into the details, yes, you have to realize you're a sinner and you need uh, a Savior. I believe that's very important. We can't just say, okay, well, we added Christ to our heart or we welcomed him to our, to our heart. Well, why did we welcome him to our heart? Do we realize our need, our sin nature? Do we realize our offense? It's very important to understand our need. Uh, and so once we realize our sin nature, we realize we can't do it on our own. Um, we, as, as the book of Romans says, all of sin falls short of the glory of God, except Christ the Savior. We're now given liberty, and now we're no longer under that law. And so, so Paul is saying rightfully here, you've been called under liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Paul is saying, don't sin. Like, okay, you're under liberty. You, you are free. Uh, you, you are saved. And so if you were to sin, God forbid, if you were to sin, you're not going to be going to hell for that sin because you're not under the law. It's not a, it's not a workspace salvation. You're already saved. Uh, and now you might say, well, then why don't I just live in sin, live like I want? Well, what, what Paul is saying here is that, and he said this earlier, I believe in the book of Galatians, you don't want to make what Christ did of no effect. I mean, he died for our sins. He bore the most brutal death ever in mankind. He literally bled out on the cross. It was bloody Calvary. Our salvation is all about the blood. Amen. It is a, it is a gruesome, gruesome thing that Christ had to do and endure. And he had to drip that, drink that bitter cup of sin for all humanity. And so now, we sit, make light of it and say, well, we have a inkling or a desire in the flesh that we want to pursue and we won't be condemned for it. God help us. And so Paul is saying, don't do that. Don't make an occasion to the flesh, right? Do not do that. But instead, love and serve one another. So firstly here, before we get to what Paul's calling us to do, uh, through the working of the Holy Spirit in the scriptures, but first here, let's understand that liberty really means liberty, that we don't have to earn our salvation, that, that there is nothing that we can do. You know, I, look, I'm a preacher. I'm involved in the ministry. Um, I think I'm somewhat ambitious. I think the Lord kind of wired me up to be ambitious, to want to do things and do them big and so forth. And I have to remind myself all the time, God saved me before he even knew me. Amen. I was, I was known of God before I was even born. Amen. And, and, uh, the Lord found me when I was in a very bad time. I didn't find God. The Lord found me. Amen. He's sovereign. It's his will. He revealed himself to me. Yes. I accepted that free gift. Yes. I have been blessed by that free gift enormously, but it's all God. Amen. He gets all the glory. And so when I try to work and say, well, I must do this and I must do that then that undermines what Christ did. And instead, I need to transfer that energy from trying to just continually serve God when, when maybe the things are getting hard and difficult to just thanking him and worshiping him and praising him. And then as things calm down and as 
as I'm in, in a better state of mind, then I can be more productive for him as we should be. And I'm using me as an example, but you too, as you realize that God loves you just as you are, that God knew you before you were even born, that God knows everything that you are going through. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows everything about you. He knows you better than your, you know yourself. And as you realize those things, you can rest and be at ease in knowing that you have liberty in Christ, that you are free, that you're not under the law, that you are not condemned, that, that the Lord loves loves you. The Lord is working all things for the good of those that are called according to his purpose. Amen. The Lord is there for you. The Lord will guide you by the working of the Holy Spirit. And so you have liberty. You don't have to worry. You don't have to feel like if you don't make, you know, the church Valentine's dinner, everything falls apart. I, I've been there. I understand what that's like. And I just want to preach to you today from my heart that Jesus Christ loves you. Oh, when I go and petition the Lord, what do I tell the congregation this week? Oh, Lord, I've got this and this in, my, in the scripture and this and this. And oftentimes what returns to my heart so deeply and so powerfully is God loves them. God loves you. God is powerful. He is merciful. And so he's given us liberty to free us from the bondage of sin and, and, and really the yoke of the law that we could never fulfill. And so now, what does it mean? What is Paul saying we do for brethren, you've been called into liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. So firstly, by love, by love, we are to serve one another. You know, it's love gives. I heard this one time, love gives, lust takes, right? So love is giving. So we should be in a giving mindset and then we should serve one another. Well, who modeled that behavior? Loving and serving one another, giving. That'd be Christ. His whole earthly ministry, as we read in the gospels, was full of love and service to others, obedience to the father. And there's so much that we can get out of that. We can look at what Christ has done and say, we need to have this kind of love towards our brothers and sisters in Christ, towards those that are that are in the church, those that are that are struggling, those with burdens. What what does God bless us with that we can help use, whether it's a talent, whether it's time, whether it's uh, resources? What can we do to be a help and a blessing out of pure love, out of love for the Father and out of love for the brothers and sisters in Christ as Christ was obedient to the Father, and as Christ was loving and selfless. And by the way, that love was so marked, was so uh, embodied in meekness and humility. Here's God in the flesh, all-powerful God Almighty in the flesh, hard to even comprehend, the maker of a billion trillion stars walking this earth. And he was just as if from a little town, and he was just of no good report, nothing no, nothing incredibly special about him, rode in on the donkey, had a, you know, had, had a, his disciples, mostly fishermen, tax collectors, everyday folks, uh, you know, was spending time uh, with the sinners, was just the most humble, meek person. Is that how we are using our liberty in love? Is it meekness or are we proud and are we puffed up and are we looking towards our accomplishments or our resume or whatever else it is? God help us to serve in meekness and love under liberty, knowing that we'll mess up, knowing we fall short, but that love will atone for our sins and the fact that we are saved, we're under liberty and we've been called to love and serve. And if that's what we're doing, I believe God is going to bless that effort greatly and he'll bless it and he'll give you peace and he'll give you, uh, he'll give you, I believe, great vision for your life as you serve him with that kind of love, knowing that you're under liberty, knowing that you're not under the law and knowing at the same time that we, we, we absolutely do not want to give occasion to the flesh and we do not want to sin because we love what Christ has done. Let's repent before God today, get right with him and let's serve with great love, with abounding love as Jesus loved. And one day we will have our heavenly reward and it'll be a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, God bless, and amen. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of KJV Cafe. Have a question for Pastor Clark? Email him directly at clark at enduringpromise.org or visit kjvcafe.com and click the envelope button on the homepage. Our program is hosted by Pastor Clark Covington and brought to you by Heartland Ministries. We'll close today with Psalm 119, verses 166 through 168. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee.